Hey, this is Carrie with Canary Quilts, and we are on block number five and six of the Midnight Moon uh, Quilt Along. It's a Halloween quilt along using the Summer Moon pattern by Carrie Nelson. And these are fabrics that were designed for Moda Fabrics by April Rosenthal. So this is our fifth and sixth block, and we've got the Hidden Star, and we've got the fly, uh, Pinwheel Geese is what it's called. And this, this is a cool looking block. I love how the orange makes this pinwheel in there and it's just flying geese. And like I say in my video, flying geese are so versatile. I mean, you can do so many things with them. Here's the small version of it. Isn't it cute? Look at that, it's so cute. And then this is the hidden star block and I didn't use the same colors that they suggest for the pattern, which is fine. You can use whatever colors you want to use. It's your blocks, it's your quilt, so you just have fun doing it. But I chose the gingham here because we did the capital T block last time and I loved how the gingham just really stood out in that block. And this is a similar type of block, so I used the black gingham here and it turned out wonderful. I love it, it's just so beautiful. I had so much fun making these blocks. Um, I There's just a lot of things I have not done, um, like these types of blocks here before. So, you know, I've done flying geese, but I've never done it in a pinwheel like this. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and this tiny little block, look at that, it's just so tiny. And that's the tiny version of this, but it just doesn't look as tiny as this. So anyway, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through how I put these blocks together. It was a lot of fun. It doesn't take very long. And uh, let's get started. We're going to have a lot of fun today. Like this type of content and you want to watch me put these together, or if you're sewing along with me and you just kind of get stuck and don't know what to do, you know, hit subscribe down below or like this video. Let me know what's, your, what's going on. What, do you, what, what kind of fabrics did you use? Did you use the same as they suggested? Um, or did you use different fabrics? Head over to my Facebook page at canaryquilts.com. Leave pictures in the comments. Show me what you're doing. I just really, I really want to know what you think of this pattern, what you think of the fabrics, what are you doing? So, you know, hit subscribe, hit uh, the like button on this video, and you can head over to my um, website, sign up for my newsletter, and you get notified when we put out this type of content. So thank you very much. So first up on the week three uh, Midnight Moon Quilt Along is the Hidden Star Block. <clears throat> so these are the materials I'm using. Whoops, that's my black polka dot. I used the silver. I have the silver polka dot background. And I think they were calling for the black, but I like the silver. And then they called for a different black. It was this one for here, but I liked the capital T block with the gingham so much. I wanted to, this is very similar. I wanted to do it again, so I chose the gingham for these blocks here, and then the orange circles and the black and white floral. <clears throat> and you can see the black and white florals right here. So this is the small block. I'm going to be putting together the large block. So those are my fabric preferences for this. You may have different preferences. I've also got everything cut out. These are my two sizes, the large and the medium, and I've got them separated, which in the pattern she does that. She separates them by A, B, C, D, E, F. So I use these little alpha bitties to help me keep track of what these are. So uh, we can now start to get ready to put together our block. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to put together these blocks here, which are pretty simple. Um, and then we'll put, we have to put these center blocks together. And in the Moda, um, on their website for the week three, she says to use It's So Emma paper piece for these. I don't have those, so I'm going to just put them together by sewing them. But I have used the It's So Emma paper pieces before, the Flying Geese one, and I really liked it. So if that's how you want to do it, that's a really good way to do it. So let's get started. Okay, to get started, we are going to, I'm working on the big block. This is the small one. <clears throat> We're going to do these outside 
half square triangle blocks. So what you do is you take your piece A, the background, and you're going to mark a diagonal line from corner to corner. And then you're going to take your C and put it on the other side. Line up edges and then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our machine and we're going to sew a quarter of an inch on either side of this line we drew. And what I do is I take my quarter inch foot and I line my quarter inch up on this line so that when I'm sewing, I'm sewing a quarter of an inch on each side. And then we're going to trim along this line and press towards the dark and then we've got two blocks. So that's the first thing we're going to do. <clears throat> Another thing I want to tell you to do is on your, um, where is my B and F? Oh, put it away. So on your B and your F, which is the background pieces that are squares and then the floral pieces that are squares, just go ahead, you're gonna need to put um, diagonal lines on the back of all of those squares also. So, so since you're doing it on this one, just go ahead and do it on this one. These two, and you'll be ready to go when we get to these pieces. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch on either side of this line I drew, and then I'm going to trim it and iron it towards the black. Okay, I wanted to show you the quarter inch stitch on either side, and then I'm going to trim that up right on that line that we drew. And then what we'll do is we'll go over and iron these out towards this dark. And then we'll have our square that goes in the corner. Okay, I've got my um, piece ironed towards the dark side. And I wanted to show you how real quick how I square these up. I've got um, a ruler with this 45 degree angle. And I line that 45 degree line up with the seam. And then I put my 3 inch down here in the corner because this is a 3 inch square. And then I can just trim it up from there. And it usually doesn't need a lot of trimming. Then you can turn it over and not only can you line up this line here, but you can line up the 3 inches here because you just trim those. So see, not a lot of trimming, but it gets those tails off. So there's our corners right here. These are done. So the next thing we want to do is put together these units right here. So that's going to take E and B of the background and F of the floral black and white. And these aren't too hard, they're just going to take a little bit of time, but they aren't hard at all. So you're going to take one of your squares, these squares right here, and then you're going to take a background piece and you're going to put it up in the upper left hand corner with the diagonal coming across like that. And then we will pin it. And then we're going to take the floral piece Put it in the bottom right hand corner, pin it, and we're going to have our diagonal going this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the machine and we're going to sew on our line this time. Sew on the line, and then we're going to come back and we're going to trim a quarter of an inch from the seam over here, and then we're going to iron the white out to make a square. And then we're going to come back once we do that, and we'll do the same thing on these two corners. Okay, that's what it looks like sewn on the line. And what we're going to do is take our ruler, put our quarter inch on the seam, and then cut that corner off. Quarter inch on the seam, cut the corner off. And now we're going to go over the iron and we're just going to iron them out like that. So what we're going to do is um, add the other sides. So 
You want to take your background piece, since that's up here in the left hand corner, and put another one over here in the upper right hand corner. Diagonal going this way. And then turn it over. Take your floral. Since you have floral here, you'll be taking your floral again. Putting that in the upper right hand corner and repeating the process of sewing down the line, trimming a quarter of an inch, and then ironing these pieces out to make a square. So I got my um, blocks here done, and I finished them out exactly like the first two, I, the first two corners I showed you. So got them squared out to three inches. Now we're gonna take our D block, which is just a single piece of fabric, cut into a square and we're going to start laying our block out. And I've got a little stray. There we go. So that's going to go in the middle like up here. And then we're going to take these blocks and we're going to put the floral print up next to the center block. Like that. And then our corner blocks, the gingham will be pointing in towards the center block here. And we've just got a nine patch block to put together. So at this point, all we're going to do is sew our blocks together in each row. <clears throat> and we're going to iron each row towards, in my case, it would be the gingham print. So I'll be ironing this way towards the gingham this way towards the gingham and this way towards the gingham. So when we put our rows together, they will nest. So I'm gonna go put all of this together and I'll show you my finished block. So I wanted to show you how I sew um, pieces that have a come to a point right here where I'm gonna be sewing. And I put this side face up so that when I'm watching my seam go, I can see that it lands at that point right there so that you're not cutting it off this way or this way. You can see that it's gonna land and you can get a nice point like I've got right there. So I just wanted to share, that's how I sew my blocks like this together. There we go, the Hidden Star block is all done in all three sizes. So I finished the medium size at the same time I was showing you how to do the large size. So um, I just put the rows together, ironed them uh, towards the gingham basically, and then so when I put then when I put my rows together, I could nest these seams right here, and I've got some really nice points right there, like you can see. So that's all there is to that block. Not too hard. I'm so glad I went with that gingham in the middle. As the star, it really stands out, and I noticed that in the capital T block, and I really liked it. So I wanted to do it again here. So next up is the pinwheel geese. So now we're uh, uh, going to be doing the pinwheel geese right here. And this isn't too hard of a block. I've already done the small one, which is probably the hardest of them all because the pieces are so small. Um, probably the hardest part of this block is going to be marking the backs of all of your squares with a diagonal line because there's 24 of them. So I did that already. All my squares are marked with a diagonal line. So we're going to build the flying geese first and that's not too hard and then we're going to put them together and put this piece onto our flying geese units and we'll be done. So what we want to do is take our C block and it's going to be the same for C, D, and E and take our B and just lay them um, together, right sides together, pin them and then we're going to go over and uh, sew on this line, trim a quarter of an inch from that line and then iron the white over. And we're going to do that for B, C, or B, D, and E. So 
So I'm going to put all of these together so that I can just take them at once to our to my sewing machine. Oops. Right sides together. And then I'll real quick show you how I trim them. Very similar to the last block we did. Come on, little stringies. So all of them, for the gray, the black, and the orange, we're going to be putting the white square on the left-hand side. So I'm going to do that on all of these, get them sewn on the green line, and then come back and show you real quick how I trim them and iron them. Well, I got so excited to finish these uh, flying geese that I forgot to come back here and show you how I trimmed them. But anyway, basically you would be sewing your square on like this. And you've sewn on the green line, so you would just come back here, put your quarter inch on that green line, and then just cut it off. And then it looks like that, and then you iron it back so it comes back to a rectangle. So anyway, we have to finish the flying geese. And that's really simple too. You're just going to take your the rest of your squares and put them on the other side of your flying goose so that the line is crossing over where you were before with the white and then coming down there. So I'm just going to get all these set up. I'm going to sew them on the green line, trim them, and iron them back, and then we'll be ready to assemble. Okay, I finished all my flying geese units here. Trimmed the backs, ironed towards the white, and then I made sure that they were at three, one and three quarters by three inches. So they are all set to go. So what we want to do now is we need to set up our. Uh, what we need to do now is set up our flying geese into the. Uh, order that they're going to be ironed, or they're going to be sewn together. So <clears throat> here's a template we can use, the one I already did, and it's going to be gray and then black and then orange. So what you want to do is you'll want to match the bottom of the gray up with the top of the black one and pin. And what I like to do is I like to sew from this edge or this side so that I can watch where my sewing needle is going and make sure that it hits that point so I'm not into that point or anything like that. So I like to sew on this side. So we're going to take our gray and blacks and let's get them all set up the way we want them. That's wrong. So we can flip them and put them together. And then we will get these sewn at a quarter of an inch and we are ironing these towards the black. Put it on like that so that I am ironing or I'm sewing. Boy, I get those words mixed up and I don't even know why. So I'm sewing with my black piece up so I can see where my needle falls on that point. So let's get these sewn and ironed towards the black. Okay, there's the black and gray put together and now we're going to put the orange underneath the black. Do the exact same thing. Line it up. Line those edges up. I'm going to pin so that I can see my point as I'm sewing. And then we're going to iron this one towards the black also. So 
So quarter inch seam, iron towards the black. Okay, there's our flying geese units put together. So now we take A and we're going to just flip it upside down, put right sides together, line up edges, and we're going to do this on all our flying geese units. There's no seams to match here. Just match your edges. And I wanted to say that my points turned out pretty good. I've got a couple chopped off here, but you know what? In the whole scheme of things, this, uh, this quilt is going to be so busy that I don't think it's going to matter. So if your points get chopped off a little, I personally wouldn't worry about it. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to look beautiful. And it will be yours. So we will get these sides put on. It's going to go on the left hand side on all of these. And we'll get it at a quarter of an inch. Or we're going to sew it at a quarter of an inch and we are going to iron it towards this white edge that we're putting on. So I'm going to get that done and then we can start assembling our little block. There's my flying geese units done. Let me get that string off. And now we need to put them in our pinwheel. So if you basically take your edge here and put it on the edge in each quarter, like that, you get your orange pinwheel in the middle. Isn't that cool? Flying geese are so versatile. It's just amazing. I have done so many flying geese this year and they've just been in so many different applications. It's been so cool. So we need to put our rows, the blocks in each rows together, and there are no seams to match here, so... Actually, there is a seam right there. That seam does match, sorry. And pin the side you're going to sew so that you sew the right side. Because you've got four sides here, you could sew the wrong side. And then this one, the edge is over to the right. Or the seam is over to the right that we're matching. And then just match your edges up. I like to pin this seam down so then when I come to it, it stays down. And I'm going to sew from the other side. So a quarter of an inch and you're going to iron, the way I remember it, so that it goes in opposite directions, is you'll iron towards your orange one. Because when you do that, it will be like this. It will be in opposite directions. So just remember to iron towards the orange flying goose. Okay, got my rows put together. <clears throat> now it's time to sew the rows together. And because we iron towards the orange, our rows are going in opposite directions. So when we flip it, that center seam will nest together. So pin that center seam. And then these outer seams will nest together. And then we can sew this at a quarter of an inch and we're going to iron just to one side. Make sure your edges are lined up. There it is, the pinwheel geese block. That is a cool block. I love that pinwheel in there and like I said, the flying geese block is just so versatile. So I did, the, I did the medium size while I was showing you how to do the large size. So they're all three done. And that turned out really cool. If you're doing this, let me know. Um, let me know down in the comments or uh, 
go to my Facebook page at canaryquilts.com. Leave me some pictures in the comments. I'd love to see it. And if you're changing up the colors, I'd love to see it too, like I did. I've just decided that, you know, I'm just going to... I'm using the same color palette, the same fabrics. I'm just going to kind of switch them up from what they have. Make it my own. So, thank you very much for watching this video.